All right, another follow-up video on the Drake equation, and uh, yeah, very uncomfortable. Uh, but anyway, we'll just do comments and uh, such. So, wrote some notes, but I really don't care for them. And I kind of want to take the conversation further, but we'll see how it goes. Um, so first, that Stitzor guy, uh, Zizor, um, he did a couple of videos, and I frankly couldn't even watch them. His, his attitude is just so obnoxious. Um, you know, you can't make these aggressive arguments unless you really have aggressively substantial facts. So if you're just going to talk out of your fucking ass and then tell everybody else they're, they're idiots, then you're not going to go anywhere. You've got to come up with some kind of rational evidence to justify uh, your tone and your arrogance. And you just aren't doing that, so fuck you. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, really, you're not making an argument. Um, so I guess I might as well get to the, the substance of his argument, which is that somehow we are profoundly ignorant of, you know, the, the universe's master plan, like, you know, somewhere underlying all this chemistry and physics is um, some sort of uh, mechanism that has some sort of validating uh, unicorn-esque knowledge built into it, that somehow an intelligence would build a universe that is completely fucktarded and stupid. Um, I mean, that's what really underlies this, this, this accusation of our ignorance. As if, um, again, I'll make the argument, the, the important details we can learn pretty easily. Uh, this is like, ob you observe the world. I mean, do I need to dissect the television to know it's a television? Do I, do I need to dissect a window to know it's a window? I don't need to know every detail. I don't need to have to know the chemistry of the glass or the frame or anything else to know what its functionality and what it's doing. We know what we are. We're a product, a byproduct of a chemically active universe, one that has energy in it and stuff is interacting and moving and transitioning and evolving. The matter itself is evolving and then when it gets into this particular form, um, you know, a whole new bizarre evolution is possible um, and it's called life. And, uh, but it doesn't have a mission. It's reproducing chemistry. It's a single <laughs> reproducing uh, compound, okay, and uh, just, just this is what it can do. It could do all kinds of different things, but this is one of the variations. Most of what it's doing is a bunch of little microbes eating each other, and then we can see the insects eating each other. We can see the, cr the, the, the crudeness of the system by observing all the other living things and what they're doing. And they're not contemplating, and they're not doing Shakespeare and you know, weeping at the balcony scene or something else um, that we consider profound and meaningful, winning World Series or some other kind of bullshit. Um, but we can see it in ourselves. We're just desire machines attempting to... And, and that all of that has been contrived to keep us just as functional, chemical, biological, reproducing devices. And uh, that's what underlies all of this. Um, and again... Um, you know, the, the difference between the agenda, you know, let's under, I, I mean, I guess we'll just go through it real quick again, but um, look, the, the, the mission of the chemistry is reproduction, and it, it, uh, to reproduce you have to survive, so there has to be mechanisms that um, promote survival, um, and uh, what everything pretty much that our psychology is built out of is built out of, yes, achieving that result. Um, and then because of the consciousness, well, even somebody argued something about, well, you know, again, this argument of why consciousness, you don't need consciousness. <laughs> it doesn't matter whether you need it or not um, for there to be survival. The point is it can be used as a tool. And if you're going to have organisms motivated by a mechanism of good and bad, positive and negative, attraction, you're going to even have the possibility of attraction. You're going to have to create consciousness, sentience, a capacity to feel. I mean, your sense organs magnified, that's all feelings are. Um, when your senses acquire a positive or negative uh, connotation or effect in your psychology, I mean, that's the definition, essentially, I think, of consciousness. Um, that kind of awareness. Um, and you could, we, it's just obvious how that's a very powerful um, psychological tool uh, in terms of motivating organisms, is to create um, uh, you know, hostile feelings and attraction. So addiction and suffering <laughs> are, are motivational mechanisms. Um, and, and especially when they can be programmed to unique circumstances, it just it's, it seems quite obvious this would give an organism uh, capacities and advantages. So anyway, this is really getting off subject. Um, so real quick, going through a few of the things. Um, the, but 
fact that uh, I think the morbid atheist mentioned that uh, our radio waves don't travel very far. Um, yeah, but you know, once we start doing it hard and deliberate, they're going to travel really far. But we'll start shooting microwaves and <laughs> you know even a gamma ray transmitter or something. You know, you can have very intense um, um, electromagnetic transmissions that are going to be able to travel to deep space. And uh, uh, in a civilization presumably thousands of years more advanced than ours would certainly have technologies. They could even make a nuclear transmitter. Um, so, um, and it would be logical that they would if they had that kind of technology. Uh, and so there should be some beacons out there. Uh, I mean, we could even convert a planet like Saturn to be a beacon uh, with the right technology. Um, uh, you know, thousands of years more advanced than ours uh, really wouldn't be a problem. You know, we could catch the thing on fire and have it beep, <laughs> you know, or whatever. Not uh, certainly doable. Um, all right, then there was some sort of talk about the expanding universe and how somehow that's going to alter the ability to communicate. No, 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 no. I mean, the universe isn't expanding faster than the speed of light, so transmissions are still going to be able to get here. I mean, the, the, the red shift is just a shift. It's just a few thousand... Um, you know, it's just taking a little edge off the speed of light, isn't And it's not even taking an edge off. The thing is moving away, so it's moving, f the light has to travel a further distance. Um, but that's a small shift. Um, it's not a, it's not going to prevent the light from getting here. Uh, the distance isn't overcomable. And somebody else argued the universe is much bigger because we, you know, can we see the edge? And yeah, but that both, that works both ways. It could be that it's also the end of the universe as far as we can see because theoretically um, anything further away sh light should have gotten here by now and if there was more stuff further out there presumably existing for a long 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 time it should have gotten here uh, so it's obviously we're not seeing photons from some other universe they aren't popping into our view they aren't reaching us so it seems pretty clear the energy that exists in our universe is pretty much the energy in our universe but anyway, that's a whole other argument. I don't think it's terribly relevant. Uh, the point is, is we can see a big piece of universe, and there ain't nothing beeping out there. Uh, and there ain't nothing talking, rational, logic. Um, all right. So the other big argument is this idea that if some new life form came into existence on this planet, it would get easily or quickly consumed. And that I think still I make the argument that that works both ways, um, because. Uh, presumably they could be created in all kinds of manifestations and so theoretically uh, uh, the first cell could develop and it could have an arsenic molecule in it and uh, as part of its makeup and uh, it would be toxic to anything that tried to eat it and um, on most things 90 percent of <laughs> life on earth would find it toxic uh, so it, it certainly could be made of something else too it could have silicone or some other chemistry in it that would just make it um, not very consumable by our type of biology. Um, and we see that, you know, that biology is narrow because, you know, the, the, the life forms that are related to us at the bottom of the ocean feeding on volcanic vents, the energy produced there, their biology is completely changed. I mean, they're feeding on something completely different. And our, what we eat, what we, how we live would be completely toxic to them. And so there's no reason to think that there aren't environments like that where life, if it was easily produced would produce, would find itself an environment. Um, there's lots of environments that are made sterile. Um, volcanoes create a very sterile environment um, to start off with and uh, so there's lots of places where they could get a foothold and once it had a foothold that there's every probability or in my opinion um, that there's just an equal likelihood that it would be food or that it would find um, what our biology produces is very appetizing and might start feeding on us. Uh, again, you have to realize that most life evolves to a uh, an environment that's cons that, that already exists and is consumable. It's ready to be a territory that's ready to ripe for taking over. And so when something new shows up, there's not necessarily anything around that's going to look at it and say food because it's already built to eat something else. It's not built to eat some kind of new life form. And so there's every, you know, it's more likely that it would exist as something completely separate from our biology at first at least um, because it wouldn't be competing directly uh, it could be feeding on something entirely different and uh, so there's no reason why there would be an incompatibility between those two life forms to start off with anyway um, in their simplest form 
And we can certainly see that lots of prehistoric type forms of life still exist. I mean, green slime still exists. So it doesn't get eradicated, even though it becomes food for many organisms. It still exists because it finds a way to evolve. It doesn't find a way, you know what I mean. Um, because of its capacity to um, migrate to other environments, um, it's just not easy to eradicate something once it starts reproducing and starts taking over a petri dish. It's pretty hard to consume every last one of them before they, through mutation, adapt and uh, have countermeasures to the aggressor that's consuming them. That's how evolution works. So your argument might be that the, that maybe we're spectacularly quick to evolve and that no new life form is quick enough to evolve quicker than we are. But then, like I said, the counter argument would be is that no, I could e just as easily say we're very slow to evolve and that uh, a new life form could have really quick evolution. They could, they could do what we what we're capable of, of mutating in a, in 10 years they could mutate in two weeks or some other scenario so i'm just saying there's lots of counter arguments to this argument that no l new life form could exist in this environment because there's lots of sterile environments there's lots of environments that are benign where there's no obvious hostile aggressor no no um consuming predator microbe all right anyway uh so feelings again is that's another big subject. All right, yeah, so we'll just talk about chemical complexity. Maybe I'll just end with that one. Um, so there's so many ways to look at this complex chemistry thing. I mean, the movie Avatar, apparently it's about some sort of stu super chemical, and it's, there's a lot of this chemical on this one planet, and it's really hard to make this chemical, apparently. <laughs> and uh, But that's sort of what life could be looked at as. It's this very complex, bizarre chemistry. And then all you have to do is, just like I said, just change the scenario. Just add one more ingredient. Once you start getting more and more complex, you just add one more ingredient, and you, you know you can't get more complex. I mean, it's your odds become preposterously impossible. And so I could just say, like, uh, diamonds don't form very easily, and it's a very high odds against a diamond forming with a little piece of gold right in the center. Okay, so a little tiny bit of gold right in the center of the diamond. Um, you know, where are the odds? And then all of a sudden I change that and say, okay, a little bit of gold and a little bit of silver. You know, now what are the odds? I mean, now it's, you know, it starts to get preposterous. And life could be that unusual, a chemical circumstance where, yes, you have to have an environment that provides the opportunity with these amino acids and other complex compounds, but there still might be a real complex arrangement and circumstance that makes it capable of reproducing. And I think it's just obvious based on the fact that we can't synthesize uh, uh, that circumstance yet, uh, that it's not simple. Yeah. So anyway, uh, complex chemistry. So anyway, I'll throw in some crap video in with this video. <laughs> I don't know, it's just going to be junk, whatever I was doing the other day and such. But anyway, yeah, and so the one guy that was just, I'm going to block a few people, I think, just because some of these commenters are just so obnoxious. Um, the neon guy is a real asshole. He said something. Um, you know, he doesn't care. You know, he says, I don't care if life was the maximum suffering. Um, he'd still think it's preferable to nothing. And it's just such a bizarre statement. I mean, you know, it, it, these, there are people out there that would just say, okay, yeah, it's all right. Go ahead. Holocaust the world. Let's all live in concentration camps, and it's all going to be great fun. And it's all somehow worth it because we're doing our reproducing chemistry thing. And you just say, where the fuck does that come from? Crazy. I mean, to be that in love with this concept of being a, reprodu a reproducing piece of chemistry, and that's all we are in the bottom line. And all the rest of it is just a bunch of bullshit. It's as meaningless as a World Series victory. I mean, your most cherished value is pretty much just the same thing. It's just a, an emotional, uh, psychological pile of crap. There's no real value in this fucking universe. It just doesn't exist. The only real value is suffering. And, uh, you know, people who think it's the least important thing, and the most important thing is satisfying their ego. Yeah, spooky. So anyway, enough said, but fucking assholes. Humans, <laughs> just don't feel good enough to deal with them. Anyway, enough said. <laughs>